Goofy is one of my favorite characters because he'll get blown up, knocked down, thrown over a cliff, and he'll get up and he'll try again. Whenever he starts a new project, his first thing he does is gets a how-to book and reads it. That's something I can relate to personally. So with that being said, I'm going to review my personal favorite Disney movie, a Goofy movie. For me, it's the final chapter to Goof Troop, a cartoon on Disney Afternoon that I used to come home every day and watch after school. The plot of the movie is that Max, the son of Goofy, wants to get the attention of Roxanne. So after dropping Principal Mazer through a trapdoor on stage, he serenades Roxanne with the song Stand Out, sung by Powerline, the greatest rock star on the planet. Okay, before Max causes the entire student body to break into a riotous frenzy, Roxanne is asked to Stacy's party by someone. The voice actor for that character was Joy Lawrence. The voice actor for Roxanne's best friend was Jenna Von Oy. I hope I'm saying that right. Both of them played on the 90s sitcom Blossom. Tevin Campbell voiced Powerline. And he said in an interview that... Stand Out and Eye to Eye were the fastest tempo songs he'd ever sung. I purchased a Tevin Campbell album after I watched a Goofy movie, and his songs are much more slower, much more romanticized than what they are in a Goofy movie. But they're still really good. Stand Out is such a memorable song that the 2000, in 2019 DuckTales actually included a clip of the song being sung between Della Duck and Dewey Duck. After getting a date with Roxanne, we get a reprise version of Stand Out where Max skates, skateboards in a Ferris Bueller type of montage where he skates through a house, saving a baby from sticking a fork in an electrical socket. Max arrives home to find Goofy packing the car. He then discovers that Goofy's going to take him on a fishing trip so that he doesn't end up in the electric chair. Principal Mazer is the one who calls and gives him the idea for the electric chair. It may seem inconceivable to you, but, his, but if his voice sounds familiar, it's because he's the voice of Rex from the Toy Story franchise. He also played Vecini in Princess Bride. Max then goes to Roxanne's house to cancel the date. When she says she's going to go with someone else, Max says that the reason he's not going is because his dad knows Powerline and that he's going to go to the concert to be on stage with them. He knew exactly where she lived. Even though he stated earlier in the movie that every time he tries to talk to her, he freezes up. There was an entire verse in the song, After Today, where it goes, She looked right through me. So how does he know where she lives? In real life, that's a big red flag. After a truly terrifying experience at a possum park, Goofy and Max sing On the Open Road, where Max sings about how depressed he is and how miserable he is, and Goofy sings about how happy he is and how much he's enjoying the trip so far. On the Open Road is an absolute must-have for playlists when we're going on a road trip. Even though things can be stressful during the setup and get ready, hearing the song as you're pulling out can just sort of help ease the tension. If you look at Goofy's key ring at the beginning of On the Open Road, You'll see a Disney key. You'll see a Disney key charm. Goofy then teaches Max the perfect cast, which naturally he hooks a stake, throws it, and he brings in Bigfoot. As Max and Goofy are hiding in the car from Bigfoot, there's a touching scene where Max spells out "Hi Dad" with alphabet soup. If you want to learn how to make your own "Hi Dad" soup, look down in the description below, and you will see a link to a video where. Someone shows you how to make a version of Hi Dad Soup. Once Goofy's asleep, Max changes the map so that they are going to L.A. to the Powerline concert. Goofy gives Max control of the map the following morning and says he's not even going to look at the map anymore. Allowing Max to pick destinations, Max chooses a few that Goofy is not exactly having fun with, so Max shows that he's not a total jerk and picks a few destinations where his dad will have fun too. My favorite stop during all this is the House of Yarn. There you really get to see Goofy's excitement, and that always brings a smile to my face. Considering they watch a piano crush a mime 
and then walk away whistling. The electric chair thing is looking less crazy. Goofy and Max then make a stop at a motel where Pete shows up and sees that Goofy and Max are getting along. The Little Mermaid makes a cameo in the form of a nightlight with a goofied nose, or an in-world nose. Okay, a few things. First, can we all agree that that pizza is the tastiest looking animated pizza ever made? And second, Pete talks Goofy into hooking up a hose into the RV. It's one of two things. It's either the water hose or it's something else. Now, we're seeing, as you, as you watch the scene a few moments later, you see that it's leaking water. The hoses are leaking water, so Goofy is going to be charged with water damage to the room. Pete hears Max tell PJ that he changed the map, and then he goes and tells Goofy. I should clarify. Pete does, does not just tell Goofy. He waits until Goofy is nice and relaxed in a hot tub. He hears Goofy say how once he eased up and ignored all of Pete's advice, things just clicked. That's when he uses that moment to reveal the map situation. He deliberately tries to ruin Goofy's vacation. Pete was always a bit of a jerk on Goof Troop, but it seems in the movie they amped it up to 11. Goofy discovers the truth about the map, but continues the trip anyway. He gives Max the opportunity to do the right thing and choose the correct path, or choose the path to L.A. The junction scene is wonderfully done. The build-up with the music, the moral dilemma that Max has to go through, and you can hear the emotion in Goofy's voice as he asks, left or right? After Max picks the L.A. exit, we get a rare sight and see a rightfully peeved Goofy. After the car falls into a river, and they go floating down it for a while, we get the moral of the story. Max says that he's growing up, and he has his own life. Goofy says that he knows that, and he just wants to be a part of it. The two sing a song, work out their differences, before Goofy falls over a waterfall, and Max has to use the perfect cast to save him. The next scene, we see they have snuck backstage into the Powerline concert in a couple of instrument cases. Timeline check. Okay, Stacy says at the start of the movie that the next Saturday is the Powerline concert party. Now, assuming that the school ends on a Friday, that's day one. Day one is they stop at the Lester Possum Park. Day two is they hide from Bigfoot. Day three... We're gonna say that's the month. We're gonna say that's a day not shown. We're gonna say that's a night not shown between uh, the roller coaster and the house of yarn. That's day three. Day four is the motel, and day five is the waterfall. So that leaves two days for them to find Powerline's concert roadies and sneak into the instrument cases. Goofy gets on stage with Powerline, and Max tells him to use the perfect cast as a dance move. Everyone at Stacy's party sees this. Even Pete and PJ are watching the concert and see it. And they end the movie with Max confessing everything to Roxanne, setting up another date, and then Goofy crashes through the porch. And that was my review of a Goofy movie. My personal favorite Disney movie. What is your personal favorite Disney movie? Comment down below, like, and share. Thank you. Have a magical day.